Oh, I am very sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. Anyway, welcome back to another Dead by Daylight video. Today we're going to be talking about a killer that is uh, the most outdated but yet the most fun and spooky killer of all time. Miguel Miers. Michael Myers. Why the fuck did I say that? Anyway, Michael as a killer is a very simple but also a very annoying killer to play and face off against at the same time. And so... I will be talking about his about his perks, his power, and his add-on that he brings in, and how you should be playing or playing as him, and how to play against him. So, the power that he has with him is the evil within. Basically, he has the ability to stalk survivors. So, at t there are like three tiers of this evil within. There's evil within one, where he is a much more slower killer at 103% movement speed, but he is undetectable, meaning he has no heartbeat, no red stain, nor he can be detected by any sort of aura rating abilities or perks. Pardon. But his uh, his lunging range is so fucking horrendous, you might as well just go and kick him in the fucking face, because at e at tier one, his lunge range does not even fucking exist. He just swing. So, what should you be doing in tier one? Very simple. Get to tier two as quick as possible. Or if there is a survivor that you, that that you can sneak up to and grab, then go for it. Or get a hit. It, either way, it works. But as long as you you are getting your evil within too quick, it, it is pretty. It, it's a, it's a good thing to have. But another thing I should be mentioning is that once you, every time you reach to evil within two or three, everybody in the map is going to get notified. Meaning you're practically announcing it from one that you're playing as Michael. So. What happens when you reach the tier 2? Well, not much changes about him other than the fact that he becomes a simple killer with 115% movement speed or 4.6 meter per second speed killer. And so his heart heartbeat is, uh, uh, goes at 24 meters and he is no longer undetectable, meaning he is just a simple killer. And his lunging range is also uh, reset to default killer range. So. What you should be doing in this tier is the same thing. Get to, get to stock uh, get your progress bar up to 99. But some of you might be thinking, well, why not add the uh, stock it, stock survivors until tier three? I'll get to that in a bit. But basically, be, what you should be doing is like get your stocking up to 99 as soon as possible, or get a down if you can, as early as you can. So, because as Michael, you need to apply a lot of pressure as possible, because you want the survivors to come up to you. Or like you could clutter up together, so you can get uh, uh, stocked much more effectively. So, why am I saying you keep the stocking uh, progress at 99% instead of uh, instantly filling up to tier 3? Because tier 3 has a time limit, you don't stay there forever. And what it practically does, it increases your lunging r lunge uh, range, by, by slightly, and it also increases your vaulting speed, and it allows you to inch insta-down survivors, with even if they're healthy or not. And so, so the, uh, Michael Myers has the ability to apply a lot of pressure and slug the survivors in a match. So, but why why should you be 99ing this? I, let me explain. Instead of instantly popping it to tier, th tier 3, what you should be doing is approach the survivor as close as you can, and once you th once you have the and once you think you have a clear uh, sh clear to hit them, you pop to tier 3 and insta down them. The reason I'm saying do not instantly pop it is because everybody in the map will get the notification that you're on tier 3. And a music theme will play to indicate it much more easier. So the survivors will become much more cautious about you and try to be stealthy, stealthier as much as they can because of his one shot in ability. And so, that's why I'm saying to stay at tier 2 and at 99% because of your smaller heart rate. But the only downside of being at tier 3 is that your heart rate heartbeat is at 32 meters so you can be more easily detectable. But you're already detectable enough because of, well, you're a fucking two meter tall man you fat your that has fat no emotions whatsoever. And so, one thing you should be doing with Michael is apply as much pressure as you can and uh, down as much survivors as, as you can. Uh, because uh, Michael being able to one-shot is best off to chase multiple survivors and one because the more time he p applies pressure, the more he can stalk, in short. And so... I am back. I do sincerely apologize. Where was I? I forgot. Anyway. So, with Michael, you want to apply as much pressure, pressure as you can. 
So, and it also kind of depends on how you want to be playing Michael, because all of his add-ons kind of change his playstyle in a specific way. So, if you want to play as an aggressive Michael, you always bring in Infectious Fright and Forced Hesitation to be able to down multiple survivors in one. <coughs> and so, and so on and so on. So in short, keep your tier 2 at 99, once you get a clear shot, pop, 90, uh, pop tier 3 and insta down them. But what type of add-ons does he bring to the table? Well, there are a lot of them that you change his playstyle in a specific way, like I said. The techie earrings, the jewelry and the jewelry box increases his uh, movement speed when he's talking by 30 per 30 per by a specific number. Another thing I should be mentioning is like, wh while you're stalking survivors, you are extremely fucking slow. Painfully slow, for that matter. So keep that one in mind, but you don't really need these. The Memorial Flower, flower and the J.A. E. Myers Memorial uh, uh, allows you to fill up the progress bar by, by a specific number, up to a maximum of 36%. These stack. So if you want to get your evil within two, uh, 3 quicker, you can always get uh, the Memorial, Myers Memorial, or the Memorial Flower. The Boyfriend's Memo increases, increases the lunge range when you're t in Tier 1 by 50%. This doesn't really sound good, but there's another add-on that this goes well with. The blonde hair, the hairbrush, the hair bow, and the lock of hair increase Michael's evil within three by a specific second. And so, however, it increases the amount of time it takes to reach evil within three for the first time by a specific percent. And so, next up we have the reflective fragment, glass fragment, and the mirror shard. So every time whenever you stalk a survivor and you let them go, their aura are revealed to you for a specific number. For a specific second. The Dead Rabbit is an interesting item that reduces your heart rate or your heartbeat to, uh, by 8 meters when you're in Evil Within 2 and increases it by 8 meters when you're in t uh, tier, tier 3. So at tier 2 you have a 16 meter uh, terror radius and on tier 3 you have a 40 meter terror radius. The Vanity Mirror and the Scratched Mirror are two interesting add ons. The, e the vanity mirror makes you be stuck into evil within two, meaning you won't be able to go up to e tier three forever until the, the, the remainder of the match. However, whenever you're stalking, even if you're looking at a survivor or not, you will be able to see anyone within 16 meter. Uh, uh, I am having a stroke. What the fuck What's is wrong? What's the matter? Fat got your tongue? <laughs> What's me? Any survivor within 60 meters or with you are, have their auras revealed to you, and you gain bonus blood points. The Scratch Mirror just makes you be stuck at tier 1, but allows you to see survivors within a 32 me meter range. And if you combine this with uh, Boyfriend's Memo, it should work pretty well. But when you should be using this? Well, if you're just playing on scaring the survivors or Twitch streamers. You better keep your eye on your six! Watch your six out this- <laughs> Of course, you can run this if you want. Let's talk about the Tombstones. Tombstones are an extremely powerful add-on that grants you the ability to kill a healthy or injured survivor at at uh, at any means. Meaning, you, you don't need to even hook them once, you'll just instantly get rid of them out of the match instantly. However, the Tombstone piece immediately puts you back to tier 2 whenever you kill a survivor, and it takes 150% longer to reach evil within 3. The Judas Tombstone is, an, is the most powerful add-on, or the second most powerful add-on for Michael. Basically, it makes him still be able to kill healthy or injured survivors, but it increases the amount of time it takes for him to reach uh, Evil Within 3 by 200%, and it decreases his movement speed by 9%. But, whenever you kill a survivor, you're still stuck in Tier 3, unlike the Tombstone piece where it immediately puts you back to Tier 2. Now, this th may not seem that great, but let's talk about his number one best add-on, the Fragment tough, Tuft of Hair. Basically what this does is makes you be per stuck in tier 3 forever, no matter what. And, but it, however, it increases the duration of Evil Within 3 by 200%. So you can pretty much go with both of these together and insta-kill everyone without having to worry about hooking them. But it is going to take a painfully long time, so be aware of it. So let's talk about the perks he brings in. All three of his perks are focused on the obsession. Or like, are obsession related. Dying Light is a token based perk where every time you hook a non-obsession survivor, basically just a normal person, you give gain a token. 
there is no limit to how much you can get this. So every time you hook a survivor, you gain a token of the 3% penalty to repair, healing, and sabotaging to, for every, to every survivor. However, the obsession gets a 33% bonus to healing and unhooking survivors, so there is a downside to this. But this can be very effective if you hook survivors constantly. Play with your fruit is an interesting perk that allows you to gain a 15% movement speed at maximum tokens. But how do you get it? Every time you chase, a sur chase the obsession and you let them go during a chase, you gain a token up to 3 times. However, if you perform any sort of basic or special attack, hit or miss, I guess they never miss, huh? Fucking kill me. <laughs> but nonetheless, even if you hit, hit or miss, you will lose a token, so kills that has the capability of one-shotting survivors is pretty good, so you don't lose too much uh, stacks. Save the Best for Less is another token-based perk that allows you to decrease the atta basic attack, uh, successful basic attack by 5% up to 40%. But, how the, but in order to get the stack, you need to hit the non-obsession survivors with a basic attack. And so... However, if you hit the obsession with a basic attack, you will lose two tokens. So be aware, uh, so like know when you should be attacking the obsession, basically. This is pretty good if you want to like catch up to the survivor you're chasing, or hit multiple survivors at once, or if the survivors are blocking the fucking hook. Which happens too fucking often. But when they don't realize is that they're too oblivious to see it. So you'll most likely just get another down. So this perk is pretty solid, however, when the obsession is killed, you won't be able to gain any tokens any longer. So that's pretty much it about Michael. It's like, I will briefly summarize his power in short. You start off at 103% movement speed, you, have no, you cannot be detected, but you move very slow, and you, you have a very short uh, lunge range. Stalk his survivors as quick as you can, but don't stalk them far away, because it will fill up the bar very slowly so get as close as you can or grab them if you can from the generator and and get to tier 2 as quick, quick as you can you either act as a normal kill and get a couple of hits here and there or hook them but whatever you do always try to get a uh, evil within th 3 or reach the perkers bar on evil within 2 onto 99% so you can one shot them at a surprise but don't make yourself extremely obvious, or like make your movement extremely obvious. That's all I'm saying. And so, that's it about Michael Myers. But what about his Mori animation? It is very simple and very decent and fits his style, or like his character. However, it does need a couple of uh, tweaking because the animation looks a little bit janky, but hey, whatever. And that's pretty much it about Michael Myers himself. He's a very simple killer, but a very hard to master type because of uh, he takes a lot he takes a while to for him to get powerful much like the oni the oni is a weak killer at the beginning but once he gets his power he's powerful the same thing applies to michael once he gets his power he's extremely powerful but building building up his power can be very challenging you either get it instantly or you get it t fucking 10 minutes later it depends on the map of course but how should you be f f playing against them? Simple. Avoid his line of sight as much as you can, and always be aware of your surroundings. Always look around it to see if he's stalking you. And if he does, run away. Hide behind cover, break line of sight of him quickly so he doesn't uh, stalk you. And if he does reach to tier 3, be more cautious of your uh, of your movement and be more stealthy. Good eye. That's it. There's really not much else to counter him because he's a very simple killer. That doesn't have like additional powers like a trapper, hillbilly, or even nurse does. Nur nur nurses, what the fuck is wrong with me? I like nurse does. So that's why he's just a very basic and simple killer. That's pretty much else to say about him. He's kind of hard to like rank at how good he is because he can either be a really good killer that can down survivors instantly and apply pressure, or he can be the most laughable stock. He's the most joke fucking killer in existence. But is he a terrible killer? No, God forbid, no. He's actually a pretty solid killer. He's just very average. And very outdated. So that's pretty much it uh, about him. He's a very short and simple killer that uh, needs a bit of quality of life changes to make him a really good killer. But under that, he's a very solid killer. And now, the next uh, daily video I'm going to be making on is on a survivor. Who exactly am I going to be making on? Well, stay tuned for that one. Anyways, have a good day, and I'll see you all later on.
Also, before we go, do you have anything else to say, Mr. Michael? Excellent. Excellent news. Well now. Anyway, have a good day, and I'll see you all later. Hello, this is Random from the Future. I am editing this, editing this video at 4.5 a.m. I'm not exactly sure if I mentioned this, but you cannot stalk a single survivor forever. What I mean by this is that if you, when you begin stalking a survivor, you will begin to notice that they are pa uh, pale white at the beginning. And you will see that they're slowly starting to lose their color. What it practically means is that that survivor uh, has like a limited amount of time that can be stalked. But how do you know that the survivor can no longer be stalked? Well, at pale white, if the survivor is pale white, then you can pretty much stalk them at a very long duration. However, once the survivor reaches a bright red, that means they will no longer fill up your stalking progress. Meaning, they will not feed you at any way, even if you stalk them for like 20 minutes straight. You will not be able to get any sort of progression filled up. So make sure you find a different target to stalk. And always know your target and who is not... Uh, it's like I should... It's like, always know your target and know who you can and cannot stalk. That's pretty much it. Goodbye.